What would, you, what would you like? Ketchup. Ketchup. What would you like? <laughs> You're just here to smile. Mommy's ketchup. Fofi's ketchup. Hey, double chop spicy. Spicy. Yeah, daddy likes spicy. Mommy can't hang. Mommy can't handle spicy. Good morning everybody. Hi, how you doing? What's up? It's Chachi and Yugi and Sophia and Amelie and we are the Hildeds. <laughs> Sing it girl. So we have the grandparents here and I think we're gonna give them a little wake up. Is it Amelie's hair was crazy? Sophia came to brush her hair. Oh, are you brushing your sister's hair? Minun. 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 Taka Minun. Yeah, that's yours. Minun. <laughs> this is your camera? Yeah. Hey, hey. Hey. <laughs> I'm outside. Like, I'm right. And I don't have like a million coats on. The summer is approaching in Finland. It's about to be a really, really beautiful time. I mean, it's always beautiful. I can just give you guys like a little summer. Summer is approaching. Right now, it's actually, it's this evening time. So, it's been a few months since I did a sit down, a personal Q&A. Um, I asked you guys to send me some questions a few weeks ago. And now, I'm sitting down to answer those questions. No further explanation needed. Let's get into your questions. First question. Are you planning on staying your whole life in Finland. Finland is a home base for now. We could, I mean, who knows what's gonna happen in the future. Uh, we could be living somewhere else in five years, who knows. But all I know is that we are enjoying Finland life for now. I feel very, I've said this many times before, Finland is a beautiful and very safe country. So that's that. But, you know, who knows? Who knows? Who knows? <laughs> what did it feel? <laughs> What did giving birth feel like down there? <laughs> did it feel different on the second time? Um, I, well, uh, <laughs> I was, you know, I had the medicines. I, I did not, I had an epidural, so you know, how I felt could be very different from how a natural birth felt. Honestly, I, I have talked about this with my mom friends. We feel like giving birth is the easiest part. <laughs> it's still like being pregnant and then the after giving birth, that's harder. So, I mean, it just, it, it just, <laughs> it just feels like something is exiting your body. Like a, like a, oh, like a, a number two, but from, from the other one. <laughs> when the moment that it happens, all the word I can say is just like this big, <sighs> release comes and that's how it felt but the second one was easier because I knew what to expect I wasn't as nervous and it, you just kind of like all right I've done it before I could do it again so yeah felt it felt as good as birth should feel <laughs> Moi, Nino. hey Moi. What is your journey of raising bonus children? You have a lot of love to give. I think that I've gotten very lucky um, with my bonus children. One, they were just from the get-go really open and amazing kids. I was also very lucky that they spoke English as well. Um, but obviously our relationship has progressed over time and um, Sisu always likes to tell me, he says like, Chachi, like we were your first kids. Sophia was the first kid that you made. So in, in, in a sense, like he, they did teach me what it's like to have children and, and children routines. And um, obviously I'm learning more and more every day. And, um, but yeah, I, I don't know. I just, I really just fully, I think from the beginning, just completely threw myself into motherhood um, with everything that I have. I just really real want to be a good mom for all my children and I want them to feel like they can trust me and come to talk to me about anything and so far that's where we're at. <laughs> I think I'm doing great, I'm on the right track but um, every day is a new day honestly in, in the life of a mom. <laughs> Even though there are routines but you never know what's gonna happen. <laughs> so um, I'm just I'm just living it and I'm loving it. <laughs> I feel like that's like a fast food slogan. Is it hard being an influencer and a full-time mom? Yes, I don't think it's possible to be a part-time mom. <laughs> yes, I mean, yes, yeah, it's hard. I mean, it's hard just being a mom. <laughs> but I think, oh, there's a deer in our yard. There's a deer, there's a deer, there's a deer. It's over there. Wait, there it goes. 
You saw it. The butt. The butt was there. The butt was there. Anyways. <laughs> Tell me you live in Finland without telling me you live in Finland. <laughs> There's like a family of deer that live in the neighborhood. Um, but Mars chased them one time and I, I'm surprised that they're back. <laughs> Obviously in the beginning when the babies are small, they, they need mom all the time. Um, but Sophia's in kindergarten um, now. So my day is mostly now just working around Amelie's naps. There was a deer! It's really nice now that she has pretty much like a set schedule um, So I can use those nap times to really buckle down and get some work done But Yuka and I also have a really good system going where we split the week weeks work So for three days out of the week he does his work and for the other two um, I do my work so it, and then we adjust you know according to whoever has a heavier week But yeah, it's hard, but if there's a will, there's a way. Just had a baby, struggling with weight. What is your secret or do you just have good genes? Ha <laughs> ha. Um, this is tough because everybody's body is different and everybody's body reacts differently to pregnancy and after birth. I will just tell you my experience. Um, I kept a pretty active pregnancy. So I feel like I was, you know, moving around a lot. So that was kind of like my workout, you know? Trust me, I still fully threw myself into the pregnancy experience eating whatever I wanted, whenever I wanted. I have said this before, but after I gave birth to Sophia, uh, I knew that I wanted to have another baby like right after. So I wasn't so worried about getting fit right away. But with Amelie, I would like to have another baby in a few years, ideally. So I felt like this time around, I really wanted to crack down on my fitness. I had a really hard time because my diet was, I didn't eat like horrible, but I also like just, you know, I didn't care if I ate a whole bar of chocolate at night and like bags of chips. I mentioned recently, now that I've been on my fitness kick, I just had to change my lifestyle. I'm very merciful to myself. I'm working out four to five times a week. I am. I have a healthier diet overall. So I'm eating cleaner, but also, and I'm replacing, you know, those chips for healthier things like cucumbers and hummus and, you know, just, I don't know, I could do like a full like my favorite healthy snacks kind of videos because I am a snacker. That's what gets me. Once I changed my overall lifestyle, I started to see some results and I'm really proud of myself because it was not easy. I wish you luck on your fitness journey. Patience is key, I gotta say that. You have patience with yourself and every day's not gonna be a great day, but it just takes time, you got this. And remember that you just, you just birthed a baby. Your body went through something incredible. So give yourself time to recover and get in a good mental space before you start, like don't stress about getting fit again. Like your body, let's be real, your body will probably never go back to what it was. I don't think it should. I think you've got this new body, own it and get it into the best physical shape possible where you're happy with it. So I get asked this next question quite a bit. Will I ever go back blonde again? Honestly, I don't think so. <laughs> Unless it was for like, you know, some huge movie project or something, like I think I would never go back full blonde again. I think I'll definitely probably go lighter one of these days and throw some highlights in there. I was platinum blonde for seven and a half years. It was like, re it was really, really bad for my hair. It took me a really long time to get it to what it is now. And guys, this is, this is all me. This is all me. I don't know if I go back blonde again. Maybe wigs, who knows, who knows? Like I said, who knows what's gonna happen in the future, but right now I'm digging in the dark. I also feel like really at one like with my culture. You know, I live in Finland. Most people here are blonde hair and blue eyes, so I'm really digging that I'm embracing my Latina side. Not, hey, not that I wasn't embracing my Latina side while being blonde. I feel like I used to get criticized about that a lot, but you know, this is a different look and I'm feeling this and you know, I like it. Did you stop breastfeeding your first one after getting pregnant with the second one? Okay, so this is the topic. When I had Sophia, I uh, had planned to breastfeed for one year. I th thought that was like a good goal for me. I was very lucky that I didn't have any problems uh, producing milk and breastfeeding went really smooth right away. So it was just really easy. I remember when she was around six months, I was like, oh my God, okay, like our breastfeeding journey is you know, soon gonna be over. It did not work out that way. There were a lot of life changes that happened. Like we, um, she started going to kindergarten and things were happening and breastfeeding just became more of like a comfort thing for both of us. I ended up breastfeeding Sophia for a year and six months and I only cut it off then because I was due in two months with Amelie. And I was like, there is no way that I'm gonna be tandem feeding. Like I just, I don't think that that's gonna be easy for anybody. The first two days were hard, but you just, you gotta do it. I also prolonged it because I didn't know how to go about it. Like it just, I didn't know what to do. So now with Amelie, Amelie is uh, soon gonna be, she's gonna be 10 months next week. And um, 
I've already stopped the day feedings um, and I'm really not producing much milk anymore so I'm gonna have to crack down on the night feedings. I have not been so eager to give up the night feedings because I'm not ready to sacrifice sleep yet, <laughs> but I kind of have to now. So uh, she's now taking bottle full on during the day and uh, she's taking bottle halfway through the night. It's around 3 a.m. when I cave and I just like whip it out. <laughs> but um, I did plan on doing like a whole how I stop breastfeeding video uh, to give some more detail on that. But yeah, I'm finally gonna get my boobs back. <laughs> Okay, last question. How did you learn to cook? I feel like all I eat is Mexican sopita and beans. <laughs> I learned probably a lot of the Mexican cuisine uh, growing up in, in my family, um, but I, I feel like I didn't really start cooking until I had kids. <laughs> I obviously had always cooked. I, oh, I just feel like I can't remember life before kids so well. <laughs> Mine. <laughs> I love you. Don't mind me. Hey. Hey. I feel like I did cook. I just can't remember what I used to cook before I had kids. But the cooking really, really buckled down um, when Corona hit because we lived in the countryside and there was really nowhere to order from. So we had to get creative. So I just started trying things. And one thing Yuka likes to praise me for is that I really dive into new foods. And if it's a new recipe, I just I just go for it. And uh, I trust myself in the kitchen. So, I don't know. Google some recipes and try it out. You never know unless you try. Does mommy cook good food? Yeah! Yeah! That's exactly how it is. You just jump on if it's Asian, if it's oven salmon, or if it's a soup, you make it all. <laughs> Sit, pa. Yeah, that's how we do it. <laughs> Alright guys, thanks so much for watching this video. I love you guys. Until next time, bye.